tell them that calamity is going to befall. And so that, that, can only tell you, that can only tell you that there is a state of disconnect between the practice of the clergy in the church and the place, the lofty place, the holy place, the highway of holiness the church ought to be. And if you look very carefully at the national discourse that is right now permeating across this nation, you see that uh, the church is trying to voice. There is something she's trying to say, but nobody can hear her. And that's why I've always articulated this very clearly to her, that you are, you are respected. The respect with which the society will view you is earned. It is something they will see. They will say, look, she's walking right. She's walking the talk. They are preaching the word, and they are not focusing on money, which is the root of all fall in the church. And they are preaching morality. They are the light of the world. And then the nation will say, you know what? Whatever they say is right. I hear you. You know, when you talk, I'm thinking of John the Baptist. And I'm thinking of Herodias... And I'm thinking about him talking about the illicit union. And I'm thinking about your message today. If President Kibaki or Prime Minister Raila Odinga were to ask you, you are a prophet in the nature of, Mos of the nature of Samuel and to David, I want you to deal with only one subject, corruption, which is eating the heart of the nation. What are the practical things guided by God that you tell President Kibaki? Oh, absolutely. How sweet it gets. <laughs> uh, it is very, very important. In fact, that's why I've always said this forum that you've set up that is essentially stimulating the nation to begin reviewing herself. In fact, essentially, the Lord is using you here to cause the nation to reinterrogate herself to review herself. Are we walking in the right direction? Just like you've clearly put it here, I'm able to bring it to them now that when I walked in here in 2004, when the Lord sent me to tell the nation of Kenya, I mean, that's way back in 2004, that's six years ago, to tell this precious nation that they ought to repent. The time for them to repent and turn away from sin had come. And that that repentance would have to be engineered from within the church. And the church leadership should take this leading role in bringing out repentance, the national repentance. I mean, there is no better way in which the nation would have rejected sin and returned to the course, to the will of God, than repentance, meaning turning away from sin, returning to righteousness, returning to godliness. Now, if the nation had embraced repentance, God Almighty, it is obvious to the Kenyan public today that then in the nature of their national discourse, you hear the discourse on the constitution, the, or the abortion, name it, you, you hear the discourse on corruption and many other areas, there is no doubt to the heart of the Kenyans that this kind of conversation, if not intervened in, intervened on by the Almighty, a divine intervention can lead to a degeneration in society, especially in the manner in which the discourse is being conducted. I hear yes. you. I hear you perfectly. But I'm talking to my grandmother in Usenge in Imbo. And they want to hear you. You have descended from the high level of prophecy. You are now on the ground. And you have been asked to deal with the problem of corruption in a practical way. Yes. What is your direct specific message? Again, the direct specific message here is that the nation, the entire nation, I'm talking about the leadership beginning from the president to the prime minister, the vice president, the ministers of government. I'm talking about the members of parliament, the assistant ministers therein. I am talking about the heads of corporations all the way through to the poorest, the youngest, the smallest man, the smallest man in the village. The message is very, absolutely very, very clear without ambiguity that only a national repentance, a genuine national repentance that causes the nation to appear before the Lord and cry out to the Lord and say, look, Lord, we have fallen short of your requirements. 
Lord, we used to be the island of peace, the beacon of hope within the developing Africa. And Lord, look, even bloodshed came here. And Lord, only you can restore us. And that is what will actually invoke a, a, a divine healing, a divine intervention that will create morality. You know, the wounds you are talking about, the wounds you are dealing with that the country has been afflicted with, they are deeper wounds. They are the, deep, the wounds of the heart. And so essentially, the nation of Kenya, if she will embrace repentance, and the message is very clear, beginning with the top leadership, all the way down through the clergy to the bottom woman or man in the village, if the nation will embrace repentance, genuine repentance, then God Almighty will heal the wounds in their hearts, the wounds of morality. And so you don't have to enact through the Constitution a law that says abortion and, is, and, abortion and, is and, unacceptable. And you are so right. You know, Plato said, good men do not need the law. And when you talk about repentance, my mind takes me to Zacchaeus. And he is told to return sevenfold. And I then look at this cassette in Eldorate on the 26th and 28th of June 2009. Looted property is returned. When you talk about repentance, are you telling Kenyan leaders that if you took land, please return it? Thank you. If you so took much. money, please return it. Is that the message I hear you telling them? And that repentance will only be genuine and true. If every clergy preach that message, do I hear you say that? You have said it in the most perfect way. I don't know what to comment on that. But I want you to understand also as a nation, as a people, that surely the next thing in the course of events that I was going to mention is where you have gone to. The beauty of repentance, the potency of repentance, that's the potential value of repentance in this land, is that repentance is able to bring out that which man cannot bring out. We see the example of what you've cited, the great movement I started here in which I called people to repentance, and we saw people return ammunition, return weapons to the DCs, to the district security teams that I worked with. We saw people return multi-millions of property that they looted as they killed and vandalized during the post-election mayhem. That can only go a long way to emphasize the power of repentance. But in the process, what you've said amounts to what I preached then, which I still preach to this nation, that when you repent as a nation, you ought to produce the fruit of repentance. And the fruit of repentance essentially means that you want to be right with God at the end of the repentance process. If you took money from people in some unlawful ways, if you did some things that uh, nobody even knows about, come out and repent. I hear you, Prophet, but the clergy don't like you very much. The other clergy have a problem with you. When you raise these issues, they come out and say, oh, you are disrupting everything else. Is it not a problem? Because these are the people, the clergy, in whom we believe quite a bit, are not listening to your message. And yet, the church listens to them. How are we going to surmount that? Oh, let, let me mention this very clearly here. It is very biblical what you see unfolding, I mean, rolling out in the Kenyan uh, spiritual landscape right now, even within the fabric of the, the nation. Uh, we see way back in the Bible, when time had reached for the Lord to do something, to move forward, to move the nation or to come to deliver his people, every time a clergy showed inertia to move, resistance to change, the Lord always skipped them. In fact, it's absolutely clear to all the Kenyans today that there is a state of disconnect, not only between the clergy and God Almighty himself, but there is a state of disconnection between the clergy and the sheep, because the Bible is very clear that the sheep essentially are very sensitive to the voice of the shepherd, the chief shepherd who is our Lord Jesus. And that's why right now, let me put this straight for purposes of record, right now, even the people in the church, they have little faith in the clergy. Why? Because many times you see people, 
clergy reported as dancing on cars, showing off big, big vehicles. You see clergy reported as asking the, 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 mem the congregations to buy them what? There is no teaching that harnesses people to the, this imperishable kingdom of God. The rightful morality that would be able to percolate into the fiber of society and bring a moral nation forward. So you see that the, 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 the practice and the lifestyle of the clergy is not consistent with the word to the extent that some of them even came up and said, look, I can heal HIV AIDS, bring half a million shillings here. Kenyans know that something is wrong. There ought to be a genuine reformation, especially a spiritual reformation that touches at the heart of the clergy in this nation. We hear you, wa Kenya wazalendo hi leo tunai nabi David Edward Award. Na swali nyeti ambalo tunauliza ni hili. Kwa nini wa Kenya? Wanajivunia ya kwamba ni asilimia sabini wa kristo Lakini ufisadi umekithiri Uroda umekithiri Ilimradi taifaletu la Kenya linazidi kudumazwa Hili ni swali ambalo tunauliza kila kukicha Na kili ambacho anasema na bio warni ya kwamba Kuna tatizo katika makanisa yetu makasisi Pamoja na waumini Hawaelekei Mwenendo ambao unafaa Na hili ni jambu ambalo lazima liangaziwe Ili wa Kenya waje na kutubu za mbizao Tutapumzika kidogo Ili turudi na swali nyeti hili liulizwe Asanteni mungu wabariki tukilidadisi swala hili la ufisadi Ambayo ni saratani katika taifa hili Aksante This program is brought to you by the National Anti-Corruption Council. Moving the masses is alive and well. We are being heard in Metro FM, Shoro FM, KBC English Service, Pwani FM, and throughout the week on all the channels of KBC. Today we continue our conversation with Prophet Dr. David Owar on the subject why Kenya remains corrupt, yet we pride ourselves of being Christians. That is not to forget that we do not have Muslims in this country. That is not to forget that we do not, we do not have Hindus in this country. But today we are focusing on Christians because we claim to be 70%. Pastor, somebody asked me a very direct question, almost personal. But this is the question. Speak about the role of your own ministry in the fight against corruption. Thank you so much. Uh, what a blessed day. I want to repeat this, reiterate this, to be involved in this tremendous conversation, national conversation, essentially looking at the moral decay that has consumed, has eaten into this nation, now, when the Lord sent me to speak to the Kenyans, the prophecies I gave are very evident out there. We published in the press, uh, it was in the streets, that look, if you don't repent from evil, that evil would build up and would cause you to slay one another, to slaughter one another, and everything was spoken. Of course, not to forget the most recent prophecies, that have actually ratified even those earlier utterances, uh, the prophecies of the Haiti earthquake prophecy when I went to warn them in November 2009 before it happened and then Chile and so on. But anyhow, the Lord did not allow me to just speak and walk out of this land. And I guess it's because of the overwhelming love, the predisposition of love he has over this nation. Now. Personally, the Lord led me to engineer repentance meetings in this country. And we started seeing historic numbers of people. And that is the point at which I began to understand that surely there is a disconnect between the rhetoric of the current mainstream so-called clergy and the people. Because immediately I called for repentance. People came in their largest millions. And we're having one coming up in Kisumu.